People always ask me, Drew, what's Dope's secret to climbing? How does he always climb with such ease? He goes on such incredible goddamn win streaks, even in Korean Challenger. Well, today's video, guys, I'm going to explain some of the tips and tricks that Dopa does uh, that you guys can utilize in your own divisions and just abuse it to climb uh, in this season. So for those of you that are unaware, Dopa actually did a QA and a this week with his stream. His fans asked him a lot of questions about climbing, a lot of tips and tricks. Um, and Dopa unveiled a lot. So today I'm going to be going through some of the answers while we watch um, one of his excellent Oriana games. I think he has a 68% win rate on Oriana. Um, this is his most played champion this season. His best win rate champion, better than TF. Um, so we'll watch one of his Ori games and go through some of the questions to kind of guide you guys how to abuse this system, how Dopa abuses the system um, to climb. So the first question he was asked was, could you reach 2000 LP? Is it possible? Dopa responds, yes, I could reach 2000 LP. Um, if I'm exempt from military service and he gives about half a year, he said he could do it um, if he used his shameless methods he talks about. Um, and he goes into depth about how at the moment he believes that rank... Um, in the higher level, in, in the higher ladders, especially in Korea, um, don't actually reflect your skill level. Your LP is not reflected of the skill level because of all these shameless methods and high elo people can abuse. Um, the shameless methods that he talks about, we'll go into depth about them a little bit later, uh, but mainly it's one tricking or two tricking champions and utilizing the information you're given um, in champion select, whether it be from team comp, whether it be from searching up your actual teammates with OPGG and determining whether it's a winnable game. If there was no dodging, if there was no, um, you know, dodging on autofill, stuff like that, he reckons that the LP would be more reflective of people's actual skill. Um, but if you compare a player that one tricks a champion um, and always dodges people that are off roll or bad players or on bad comps, compared to someone who never dodges, plays every game out, the person who never dodges could be the much better player. The person who actually uses all this information and uses these shameless methods could be ranked a thousand LP higher. Like it's that ridiculous how good these climbing methods are. I've actually noticed this for a while now for Dopa's Korean account. Of course, Dopa can't stream on his Korean account, but he doesn't play many games in this account. He plays a couple of games a week um, because essentially I check his LP. Okay, I'm a bit of a stalker. And I can see how many dodges Dopa is doing. Do Dopa does so many dodges per week. There's some days he logs in, he'll get into a champion select, he'll dodge it. He'll he'll get into another champion select, lose 10 LP for the second dodge. And then he'll be done. He won't even play a game. But I'll notice his LP goes down 13 for the day. And I said to myself, Dopa must got into two lobbies, got auto-filled a bad players. He must have dodged it out. Um, and that's why, especially in high elo, you see Dopa going bigger and bigger win streaks. Because he starts using these methods more and more. Um... I remember there was a time even when he was doing his master tier promos, he just dodged his entire promos out because of the teammates. So Dopa utilizes this in Korea so much more. When he streams, guys, when you see Dopa actually on screen, his image, he's playing in China because he's banned in Korea, but he's allowed to play in China. So he streams in China so he doesn't get banned. Um, but because he's streaming and he's waiting queue times, and he said there's no OPGG in China, with a skirmish going on, there's no OPG in China so he can't get this information to dodge. So he just streams, he never dodges, he's like 6-700 LP challenger, um, he doesn't have the information. But in Korea he does, and that's usually why he climbs much faster and much higher in Korea than he does in China. So one of his viewers then asked, he said, Professor, they call him Professor apparently, um, you know, does this, does dodging, does, does, this, does these shameless methods apply in lower elos? And he said more so than higher elos, honestly. The information that you can gather from a champion select on... A player, some, like, in high elo, players are playing all the time, right? In challenger, you've got to play at least one game a day, otherwise you decay. In lower elos, man, you could get the whole lobby, and you could notice your jungler is off-rolled, support player, and hasn't played a game in two months. It's their first game. Just dodge. You're not, it's, it's either they're getting boosted, there's something weird going on, they sold their account. What is going on? The information in lower elos can be more valuable than high elos, Dopa said. Um, so if you're not utilizing these strategies, guys, like... Dope is, he uses this word, what is this word? He uses a Korean word called hogus, which is a Korean word for foolish, saying that if you don't use these methods, you're foolish, you're stupid. If you're generally trying to climb and you're not using these methods, you're an idiot, what are you doing? So I've pretty much shown how to do these methods, guys. You just copy the whole lobby and paste it into OPG search bar. You'll get your entire team's information like this. You don't have to look up individual players. Just search, just copy paste into the OPGG search bar and you'll get the entire team's info. Um, that's what Dopa does, that's what everyone in high elo does if you're trying to climb. Um, essentially, do I think it's good for the game? I think it's really toxic for the game. I'll go one hour in challenger without games, 
but I'll have seven or I'll have I'll so many lobbies that go through. We finish the lobby just before the game's about to start. Someone dodges because they're not happy with the comp. They're not happy with their teammates. If they have a one trick and they get the one trick got banned out, they'll dodge it because he has such a low win rate. Or the one trick will ban will will dodge out himself. Um, and this is just creating such a toxic environment in high elo at the moment. Um, I don't know what they need to do. Either they need to make dodging lose MMR. Because people in their head, they think, oh, you lose 3 LP for a dodge. This is crap. You know, if you keep dodging, it's the same LP as a loss. Well, no, because when you dodge, you lose LP, but you don't lose MMR. So let's say you lose 3 LP for a dodge. You don't lose the MMR. So your next three wins, you're going to be getting that LP back because your MMR is higher than your actual rank. Do you understand? Dodging that you don't lose anything. Nothing is lost because all that matters when you're trying to climb is MMR. How many points that you gain. Your hidden rank, which is still a pretty stupid system in my opinion. A huge shockwave by Dopa. Let's see how it plays out. It's 5-1, and one, remember guys. I haven't really been talking too much about the game. But it is looking absolutely disgusting for Dopa's side. 7 kills to 1. Farming up a storm. Dopa is probably one of the best come from behind players I've ever seen. Um, he doesn't give up. He continuously plays and makes the most ridiculous comebacks. That's a blow the flash. Jax is 4 zip with a sheen, by the way. Udyr trying to move his way in. No ultimate from Dopa. Uh oh. Q doesn't land. Ignite is popping. Just lives. The help of some health potion. Needs this shutdown. This is so tragic. Grabs one. Beautiful. There's no way he gets another, is there? Look at how low health. Okay, moving back. Has no flash. And guys, if you notice Dopa on his climb in Korea, he literally plays Oriana TF only. He plays two champion. This is a guy who could play any champion in the game. Like, And you guys are in your own Soluku games. Think about it. And you have like 30 or 40 different champions you've played. Like with five games or something. You just really, you just understand how ridiculous that is when you like, obviously Dope is playing for rank one. Some players, some people play, like some of you guys just play for fun. Like, let's be honest. But if you're genuinely trying to climb and you think that you can play more than like one or two champions at its exact top level, then you're just, you're kidding yourself. Find the best champions for you suited in the meta and spam one or two. That's all you need. That's seriously all you need. And you'll get the best results out of that. Because you'll learn so much more on how to apply yourself, how to carry, how to play under pressure in different circumstances. Like, I know everyone's got, like, a comfort champ where it's, like... Like, even I've got comfort champs. I've played the game for, like, 10 years. I've played, I played every different mid laner in different metas. But, like, for certain scenarios, like, I've got champions where it's, like, okay, I got a lead. I know what to do. You know, I'm playing TF. I know to go into the side lane with ultimate. I know how to play out from a from a big gold deficit. I know how to play with a gold lead. I know how to position in team fights. It just it comes naturally. It feels good. I know what to do at every circumstance. If I'm playing a new champion, like for instance, yesterday I played Gwen. I got a, like I got a couple kills. I don't know what to do. Do I engage? Do I side lane? What the hell do I do? How do I finish this game? I'm not comfortable. And that's those small differences are just they're night and day, and they're going to cost you so many games or give you so many games if you are playing into your comforts. And that's what Dopa loves to do. As this game, he is doing pretty well. His team dropping the ball a little bit. I don't think it's impossible to come back from. His comp is very solid. He needs the Udi to get ahead. And also, guys, I think Gwen is trash. I played one game of Gwen, and I thought it was horrendous. Now, is that me being, you know, dramatic? Perhaps. But perhaps not. As we get our second kill of the game, Mirror moves in. Jax flashes. Dope looking for the plants. Does get them live. No, he just drops. But it's actually only within... They bring it back to 1k gold lead. Or deficit. Actually not much. This is actually fine. Price is inting. I remember playing this happy game guy in Korea. Um, but he's farming very well. And I saw Nemesis... 100 LP masters already in Korea, guys. This guy is climbing fast. What champion do I want to do for Nemesis, by the way? 
I've been seeing he's playing some Trindimir mid as a counter to Silas, because Silas is probably the best mid laner in the game at the moment. Maybe a Trindimir mid review, I don't know. It's a strange pick. Not impossible. I remember TF Blades that told me, Trindimir mid, it's good. Back when I was in crew with him. I said, shut up TF Blade. What do you know? What do you know about mid lane, kid? Maybe he did know. Maybe he was right. But um, essentially, guys, that is that that that's the tips and tricks. You know, there is like that. There's secret shameless methods you can use for climbing, um, and you should be using these dodges. But overall, you know, there's no quick, easy, guaranteed fix to climbing in League of Legends. Find a champion or two that's strong in the meta. Make sure to dodge. Like for me, as a mid laner, I I dodge. Mainly, I dodge auto-filled junglers. I can't stand playing with the jungler that's auto-filled. If I'm AD carry, I will dodge my support if they're auto-filled. I can't stand having to rely on someone that doesn't know what the hell they're doing. They've ruined my entire experience. Other than that, just keep your champ pulls small. Don't give up on games. This game this game was like 7-1 or 8-1. They were down so much gold. And a lot of players start typing. Ooh. Dude, that's one more Q. Come on, get it! Get it! Nice. Some players, man, this is what they do wrong. They start typing. They say, come on, bot lane, stop feeding. Everyone starts typing novels. Everyone starts pinging each other. Put the game on mute, man. Stay positive. Positivity is one of the most underrated climbing methods in the game. Just small things like, like just typing like jungle gap at like three minutes could end up tilting your jungler. And that could... At 20 minutes on, when you could have come back from the game, he might just in his head say, no, this mid laner's no junk gap, and start typing. It just, it, it's a snowball effect, butterfly effect, man. Everything that you say in the game does matter. Um, so I would just say nothing. It's usually a very um, good strategy to climbing, in my opinion. As a challenger myself. As Dopa TP's into the bot side, looking to try and get behind. Doesn't have ultimate. Needs to try and kite this one out. Oh, that is a beautiful sleep by Lilia. Dopa has flash. Perhaps one kill for himself. I think he need a... Uh, he has flash, but he just gets CC'd in time. 19 to 9. Disastrous. For the red side team. Lulu top is very popular, by the way. In Korea, specifically, the shield top laners are doing very well. You play it with things like Udia jungle, like Hecarim, like Kindred, and you just support them up. You hold your lane and just support your jungle. It's a pretty good strat because jungle is overpowered. We all know this. Especially in Korea. I don't think who wins late game fights. Oh, man. It just depends. It probably is going to depend on the shockwave and Kaiser's positioning. Overall, I mean, blue side team, left side just seems they have they they do have it all. They got front line, they got good CC and engage, they got good side lane pressure. Very intriguing. Build path, by the way, we got a Leandri's Dopa. It has been going Leandri's into Void Staff recently on Orianna. He was going Ludens for a while, but he just switched it up, man. He, I guess, prefers the consistent damage nowadays from it. Because you're getting a lot of the... You get extra haste, of course, but you also get that burn, that percent health burn. Um, into the flat pen. Sorry, the percent pen from the Void Staff. Just gonna give you consistent results game by game. No more Archangel, no more tier. Um, doesn't really like the build path, I guess. You gotta be stalling out a lot of damage. Mid lane itemization is kinda crappy at the moment, everyone knows this. Looking for a pick now. Putting the ball on the Udia as he moves in. Salus. Sprinting away. There we go. Dopa picks up their 600 gold shut down into the dragon. He still has ultimate, by the way. He has ult flash. I think dragon pick up by Udi here is perfect. 
Gobu can move in, try and wave clear to stop this. Dragons are honestly one of the best win cons, especially in lower elos, guys. Because teams don't really know how to end the game, it gives you a clear win con. It gives your team like a, a clear heads up, like, hey guys, it's soul point, let's all group and fight here and then win the game. I know in lower elos, they definitely struggle to identify what a win con is or what to do. They just identify, hey, I see a guy, let's put my abilities on him and fight. Dude, I wonder if we get Dopa vs Nemesis. That'd be pretty interesting. That's Kaisa. See, you see Kaisa, guys. Like, Kaisa has 10 CS per minute. Like, she just got a kill, but, like, she's 1 and 8. But she's, like, the gold is still relevant. She's keeping up with Samira in items, even though Samira's 5 and 1. Like, farm is so underrated. As we move out. We get our jewel on our way to the Void Staff. You see how the enemy has no magic resistance, however? People all the time think that, you know, you don't go Void unless the enemy team has a bunch of MR. The truth is, like, the cost for the Void Staff, not only, like, you're getting... It, 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 void Staff is very cheap, okay? And it's a legendary, so you're getting your Mythic from your... The Andres. But also, the like, the 40% um, percent pen is so valuable, even on the... Um, like, it's not as valuable as flat pen on just base MR. But as the game progresses and people's MR scaling values increase, it becomes more and more efficient. And people are eventually going to get MR. And it's go it's just puts you in such a good spot. Where you you're never in, like, this weird position where it's like, Oh, I got death cap, but the enemy's got a bunch of MR now, and I've got to save up for another goal. As soon as you get that percent pen, it's like, okay, I'm set for the game. I'm going to be dealing damage no, no matter what happens. I'm in a good, I'm in a really good position. And that's why usually these mid laners are going second or third voids these days. We pick up some kills. Six and two, six stacks in the Dark Seal. I'd love to see a Magi's here. Pretty unlikely that the enemy team can get onto this Oriana unless Ali gets a flank. <laughs> And it's only 2k gold. It's 21 kills to 13, but it's only 2k gold. Too many people in lower elo don't know. They don't know the golds, right? They just see the score line. It's 30 kills to 10. Oh my god, it's over. They're so far ahead. It's all about, like, it doesn't matter how many kills, guys. It matters about the gold. And you don't know the gold in game, okay? You gotta, I mean, people can have a rough idea, but you don't know the exact number of gold. So just keep trying. Never give up on these games. Play for the turns, man. Sick of these players that get into a game, they drop one or two kills and they say, FF, go next. And there's so many big streamers and creators that just do this on stream. And it kind of tilts me because their audiences all just eat this shit up and go, Oh man, I need to get a one bad gank, it's over. F this guy, it's FF open. Go next. They're just like, come on, man. Let's be grown men here. We start a game, we start to win, okay? We're getting in to finish the game and to play to win. We're not getting in a game to get played to carry or played to get a good jungle camp, camp or something like that. Get in there and try and win the bloody game, man. Oriana ult whiffs. Ball's still there. You gotta play in the back line. Galio gonna come in. No, Silas stolen ult. Dopa flashes. He gets CC'd up here. Is he able to get out? Oh, he is, but the enemy team... On their heels. Wu Yan Feng Yu. People, t I'm pretty bad at pronouncing Chinese, and people let me know all the time in my in, like in my DMs, by the way. So just know that I'm aware of this, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna fix it. Oh, we need one more Q. We can't get it. Lu is thinking about flashing across. She's so fed. Lou is a really good answer, dude. Yeah, she can keep up and farm. She has nice CC and shred him if need be. Void staff completed. Now, do you see, guys? 
Do you see the trinket Dopa switches over to? People always ask me, what 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 ward should I have? Should I have like sweeper? Should I have blue? Should I have yellow? It's situational. So in this situation, enemy team's threatening Baron. It's over 20 minutes, they're threatening Dragon, they don't have much vision out. The blue is perfect, man. You can see if they're gonna be starting Dragon, you need scout out areas. It just makes sense. Past 20 minutes, start thinking in your head, can the enemy get a Baron rush? Do we have good vision set up? If your bot lane or your support is really far ahead and your jungle, I mean, they're going to be able to set up good vision on these objectives. You're not going to need blue because you should always be controlling the area. Maybe a sweep will be giving you more value to go into the, the area, sweep it out and make sure the enemy has no vision. So you just got to, it's, it's intuitive guys. You just got to think about um, what is the best for the scenario of the game. Udaya, I would love a blue buff. Thank you, buddy. Are you serious? Do you want me to leave the game? We have soul point coming up, by the way. Don't forget, Udaya had pretty good dragon prep. And watch the ball placement for Dopa here. One thing when I play Orianna, guys, is you don't want to be too... horny with your ultimate, okay? Sometimes, holding your ultimate, and just, oh my god, that Samira going for the Hail Mary Baron setup. Sometimes holding your ultimate, and just waiting, okay? Just waiting for the enemy to stop thinking for a second. They start stacking up, they say, oh, Orianna ult must be on cooldown, or she must have used it at the start of the fight. No, I've been waiting this whole time. Boom, five man ult. This alley. Go pa. Terrible positioning. Terrible positioning, but it might not matter. This Kai's are looking to go in deep. This should be two kills and the Nash. Nice one, Galio. One of the best comebacks from an AD carry that I've ever seen. This guy was like 0-7 or something ridiculous at one point. And they're gonna start up the Dragon. Start up the Baron. Then hopefully reset and start setting up control around the Dragon Pit. Dober's next item, looking defensive, probably going to be a Banshee's or an Hourglass. I think Banshee's is great. Namely because you can avoid the Lilia bubble into sleep. But even then, the Hourglass is going to allow you to survive a little bit longer if the Alley of the Jax gets on top of you, so... I mean, overall, I'd probably prefer the Hourglass, I reckon. And this is how you guys should be thinking when you're thinking about defensive items. It should usually be the Banshees or the Hourglass. You've just got to know which scenario is better, you know? Top side. Teleport is coming up. We have good vision set up as well. At this point, I'd be happy just to ARAM with my team. No flash. Flash is 20 seconds. Hit the Q. Ultimate pop. Shield bow. Is it enough? No. This Kaius has been caught out one too many times now. And they'll be able to get inside track on the mid lane tower. Dope wants to go bot side to try and stop the Jax. You gotta be careful though. Jax has ignite, has flash. Mm, QW just does not land. And he's gonna have to go around. Clears the wave out. And look at his team on the mid lane inhibitor. He has no ultimate. Dax might try and cut across on this team. Farm's looking a little bit low this game. It's been like it's been pretty hectic, let's be honest. There's been a lot of fighting, a lot of bad positioning. At the end of the day, he has more than his counterpart. That's all that matters. Jack's coming in. Ooh. You gotta be careful here, man. You gotta be really careful here on these extensions. I don't think this extension is worth it, but the way 
The wave's gonna come in and the enemy team could flank across. Julia splits into the top side. Dopa gets the back, probably has his item. Did you really buy a Magi's? Pretty bastard, but it's good. It makes sense, guys, because he has Flash. He knows the next team fight is likely going to be in his favor. He teleports in here. Orianna's a great Magi's user because you just put your shield on everyone. And then you just get assist on assist on assist. Just make sure you yourself don't goddamn die. Soul point. Watch the ball control. Watch the ball control. Oh my god, I've lost. It's a four-man ultimate. How perfect was that? They grabbed the soul. But Jax is coming in now. This fight is not looking tremendous. It is. Dopa clutches it. Nine stacks on that Magi's. That was that. that I mean, this is why you play Orianna. That game-changing ultimate. Goddamn love to see it. What's he checking for? Is someone here? Oh, Silas is here. You can't kill him. He'll just go pop. Oh, but here comes Kaisa. I see him. I see him. I see him. I know where he is. <laughs> Such a bronze chase. This is just not necessary. The only reason he's chasing, he has his Magi stacks to get. Get 10 stacks and get that extra uh, movement speed. So he's at 13 now. Wait, did he, ha did he have 11 before? He must have got an extra assist, I didn't see. Does the enemy team have any anti-heal? Not on the AD, not on the mid, not on the jungle, not on top. Alright. They have no... They have no heal cut against Ocean Soul. Absolute newbies. You definitely are going to be needing that. Defensive item should be... Dope is weird, man. He keeps his corrupt. Like, he never... I always... Like, if I can sell my corrupting pot for an item... Dope always just holds on. He loves this item, man. He has this fetish for it, okay? Don't question him and his corrupting potion. He will not let it go. A lot of, like... Professional coaches would be like, Sell it! And buy dub two control wards to set up vision. You know? Dope says, No. I won't. No, you can't make me. No TP in the side lane here. Ah. Uh... Okay. Baron spawning. Dopa can't be bought. You can't. And here comes Jax. Alt lands. Flash. Should be one for one. I don't really like that positioning. Like, he wants to... I mean, I guess he's just looking to try and 1v1 the Jax. I don't see it being necessary, though. And if you get caught like he did, Jax had Flash. It's not... You're not in the best spot. Completes the Hourglass. I bet he wish he had that. I bet he wish he sold his corrupting to get it. This team is going to start up and shred the Baron. Look at these items on the AD carry. Blame Tower still standing. What the hell? Opa zipping out of base. A lonely five pages on his Magi Soul Stealer. Continuing to try and increase him. Flash not up for another minute and a half. Beautiful job, Kaisa. Triple kill. I miss hearing that in Korea. I gotta change my... You can change your client language to whatever language you want. If you want to feel like a god... Dude. Oh, the enemy team. They dropped the FF. Well, that's going to be the review for today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. I've unveiled some of the tips and tricks, I guess, from Dopa. From his mouth.
on to you guys. Hopefully it works in your own Solica games and you enjoyed watching my video today. Until next time, boys, I'll catch you all later. Peace.